Hi, Jason. How's How are it? you? Really good. So, uh, how have you been doing? I've been doing okay, thanks. Well, that's been good. been doing okay. I've just uh, been doing some playing today. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just in my house today. So, uh, everything's okay, thanks. How are you doing? Really good, really good. I'm talking to Rowan Robertson here. Excellent guitar player. Just seen your uh, cool, Reverb you. Nation page. My Re Reverb Nation page, yeah. Yeah, it's a great site, that. You find that the tools of the internet today is uh, quite good. The tools of the internet, yeah, I do. I think it's, I think it's got a really wonderful side. How you can record music and send it to uh, someone in China, or you know, instantaneously, and you can um, you can put your own music out, and um, you can build fan bases, and it's made the world so much smaller. Um, and there's obviously parts of it which are, are bad as well, you know, like the the way that the value of music has really got the value of it taken away um, because of sharing, and uh, it's just changed everything. I guess it's just uh, just the future, I guess. Yeah, you're you're completely but, uh, right. There's a lot of great tools available in the digital world. Yeah, definitely, very exciting. Rowan, you're part of uh, Ronnie James' duo band from 89 to 91. Now, how Correct. old were you when you joined? Uh, uh, 17. Because you were quite young. Yeah, I was. I was. Just a kid, really. Where did you get the luck to join uh, Ronnie James' duo? Where did he have saw you? Well, I guess, um, I guess I was what he was looking for, really. I mean, I was just... Um, I know I brought some youth and I know he liked the way I played, and and uh, I was just, I feel so blessed that he chose me. Um, you know, he's given me everything. So, uh, you know, I had to send him a tape, an audition tape, when uh, when they needed a guitarist after the Dream Evil album, and um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even going to bother sending it, but my friend told me to, and I sent it. I recorded it on a four track, and I, I put the last in line song on, and then I did my own solo over it, and then I just did some just sort of riffing, and and uh, the first time I sent it, it got sent back to me because I I had sent it to the record company, mm -hmm. and they sent me a letter. The English record company sent me a letter back saying that they didn't need session musicians for the record company so they really didn't take any notice and and then I uh, sent it to the fan club the Dio fan club in LA and uh, about six months later I was just sitting with my family watching Star Trek and the phone rang and I went and picked it up and someone said uh, can you hold for Wendy Dio and um, Wendy Dio asked me how I'd feel about playing in front of 20,000 people right off the bat on the phone. And I said, I was, I was quite cocky at the time. And I said, Oh, fine. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and she said, well, can Ronnie come and see you play in England anywhere? I said, I was going to play somewhere. And she said, well, how would you feel about being flown out to LA for an audition? And I, I, I put down the phone and of course I was, you know, just completely boiled over and excited and, and really quite scared about, you know, nerves about coming over to play with them. And and um, my dad said to me, he said, well, look, just, just ch take it as a free holiday to America to play with your idols, your heroes, and just look at it that way. And and, um, and then when I, when I got when I got over here, I met Ronnie, and he was very nice, and uh, he said to me in the audition, he said, um, he says, look, I really want this to work. I really want this to work, and uh, which is a very, very nice thing to say, and um, we played through, like, Stand Up and Shout, Last in Line, and I remember at one point I looked up, so I was really giving it everything, you know, really playing, playing as hard as I could, and I looked over at Jimmy Bain up the other side of the room and he was smiling and like laughing and <laughs> and I knew that I was doing all right. And then uh, and then the, another audition 
later and, and uh, they told me if I wanted the gig, I could have it. So I just went back to England and uh, basically just spent a week or two getting my stuff and then came over here and into the uh, um, got an apartment and stayed with people and they all looked after me and it was it was uh, the whirlwind it was amazing wow um, yeah and then the rest is all history yeah <laughs> yeah the rest is yeah that's, uh, they should make a movie on that uh, that sounds like a really legendary story how it just came out well yeah I mean that would be that would be something else but um, I would, you know, I would like to write it down or something at some point because, you know, especially with the last recent events, mm. it's made me really, uh, a lot of the memories are coming really clear. It's actually, you know, quite interesting the way it happens. With the memorial for Ronnie James Dio that was, you know, Saturday, did you attend that? I did. Uh, actually, I was there on Sunday. I went there on Sunday, and I yeah I did attend it, and I saw uh, Willie Fife speaking, which was uh, which was Ronnie's uh, personal assistant and I guess kind of bodyguard or you know just a personal assistant, and he Willie Fife originally worked for Deep Purple, so he's 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 worked with Ronnie for forty odd years, and he spoke at the uh, memorial and. He was always very friendly to me, Willie, and I and I and I obviously spent about a year, quite well, maybe under a year, quite closely with him because of the touring, seeing him every day, and and they really looked after me, you know, they really looked out for me and looked after me, and so I managed to see him at a bar afterwards and got his email and and um, you know keep in touch with him and saw Claude Chanel. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Bain, I actually played with him that night, and that was great. He's such an amazing player, that guy. And uh, saw Vinny, so it was uh, really, really uh, obviously a very uh, terribly sad day. And of course, you got to meet back your old friends, you know, from the the band, which that's a good thing. That's yeah, that's right. And to see all those familiar faces was was very uh, very very nice feeling actually and to interact with the fans y yes and and uh, and the outpouring of fans there I, I don't know how many people came but there was probably probably a couple thousand I would think and they all queued up and they all they all uh, waited for hours in the sun watching the video screens outside and Eddie trunk did the um the talking and he kept you know, telling them outside how much they were appreciated and that they were going to get to come in and say their uh, final goodbyes, mm -hmm. pay their last respects. And everyone out there got sunburned and, you know, they queued up, they lined up for, for ages afterwards. And, yeah, it's very sad. Ronnie James Dio will be played constantly on every channel, you can imagine, and the music will live forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. His music will live on forever. And there'll be tracks of Lock Up the Wolves on there. Yeah, there will. I think, um, I think um, you know, it will perhaps get a bit more attention because there's only so much material that Ronnie did and people are going to want to dig into it all. And with that, people are going to start seeing, you know, Rowan Robertson and, you know, other guitar players that they didn't maybe see or known that there was with Dio. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's it. That's true. And how was it touring, you know, with Dio and back in you know eighty nine, ninety? Um, well, it was a f I, it was a fun tour. It was a lot of fun. It was the first one I'd I'd ever done, so I done I didn't know what to expect, and you know I just I was just I remember playing. Um, I think. I think supporting Metallica or, or being special guest for Metallica in in Germany on the and Justice for All tour and and playing in these you know giant venues and looking up and seeing you know just 
candles, uh, you know, there's everywhere, you know, big arena just full of like, you know, yeah. lighters, like, and looking up going, how did I get here? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it was a lot of fun and we used to, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, partying and, uh, and good times and, um, I think I think everyone had a good time on that tour, and it, you know, lots of lots of foolishness and passing out on the bus and drawing on people, <laughs> and you know, uh, sabotaging the support band and and them sabotaging us and throwing water on us, and and uh, you know, I think it was just a really carefree time. I mean, I could I could go into many stories about it. I just don't know where to start. <laughs> Rowan, ever consider writing a book on you know what you you've seen and with Dio? Yeah, you know it's the, the thought is there. I must admit the thought is there because uh, I do like writing and I could I could I could really get into it. So I think you know it's definitely a possibility. To be honest with you, yeah, it would take a lot of work, but um, you know if I just started doing it because when he was when he was writing a book, wasn't he? I'm not sure. Yeah, from what I understand, I, I think so. I wonder if we'll ever see that. Well, I'm sure something will come out of it if he did write stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you could make a book, My Life with Ronnie James Dio, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was only doing a, a blog the other day on my MySpace and I... And I thought it would be a good opportunity to remember a couple of things. And just as I started to write it, I just really just got into it. And, you know, it's only a few paragraphs, but just right from the beginning, I've got all these memories. Yeah. And Rowan, what you been up to these days with your music career? Well, I'm playing with a group called DC4, which is um, Jeff Duncan from Armored Saint. Mm-hmm. He's the other guitar player. There's two of us on guitar. And we're working on our second record right now. And we're about to go in and do uh, guitar solos on that. And it's sounding really good. And you're doing some uh, heavy-duty solos still? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. That's the main yeah. question. How's your guitar playing, you know? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. It's changed. I mean, throughout the years, I... I, uh, You know, I think... It changes a lot. It changes a lot as you change as a person. It definitely changes a lot. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a different, different person now. I mean, I could, I, I'm, I've got the opportunity actually in January. I hope it happens to go to Norway with um, Rick Hagen, the drummer of um, Ripper Owens, mm -hmm. and um, Patrick Johansson, the singer of Astral Doors, and we're going to play some of that album. Lock up the Wolves album, and uh, and I'm going to have to play that stuff again. And I, I, um, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, I can play, I can still play all the notes, but uh, you know, you you change as a person, and you get into, you know, as an artist or a musician or whatever you want to call it, you you also get into different things, and you want to explore, you know, different styles of music. Like for instance, I did an album with Oni Logan, the singer of Lynch Mob. Mm -hmm. right after Dio. I did it in 94, 93. And uh, it was a completely different style of guitar playing. And uh, it was much more um, sort of, um, um, you know, a bit sort of like uh, classic rock and maybe a bit psychedelic, still heavy. But, um, you know, right from then I started exploring and trying to bring in elements because when I was a kid I learned all different styles of guitar like um, you know the first thing I ever played was like finger picking like folk stuff and and uh, you know but I mean I, I love playing the the hard rock and making making the al making the albums and doing the you know with the drums and the guitars and everything and that's the music I want to make mm -hmm. so um, you know I, I still very much want to want to do the hard rock thing, and you know that's I just love it. I love it, and I'm getting more and more 
you know, more and more thankful that I could do that, you know, the enjoyment. I mean, that was like when I remember, I mean, every everyone knows if you think about think about Ronnie James Dio, you just know how much he loved that music from from when he really started doing it in I mean I don't want to speak for him but I think it's I think it's not a stretch to say that from Rainbow when he when he realized what he wanted to do with the rest of his life and he gave he gave his whole life to it you know he loved it and uh you know that that the power and the mystery of of um you know that, Whatever, whatever style you want to call it, you know, mm. hard rock, you know, that Dio style. He just he loved it. And he loved creating it, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do with your life. So, I I feel so thankful to him that he gave me the opportunity to to uh, be at least have a bit of a name, mm-hmm. so so I can um, make that music and have a you know have a few people, hopefully more than a few, hear it. So I'm really excited about making more of it. Let's say you're going back and playing stuff of Lock Up at the Wolves. How long we, would it take you to get back in shape and do this stuff? Oh, I, I think uh, I think I could play it right now. I don't think there's, there's too much of a problem there. Um, but I think once I know that this thing is going to happen, I'll be I'll be practicing be practicing with it to to. Uh, rehearse it and rehearse it to get it like you know really badass have it Rowan Robertson 2010 version yeah yeah I mean it's going to be basic I'll, I'll play it the same way I'll play it the same way maybe a little different but but uh, I don't think it'll be that different to be honest with you probably not if you already uh, created it should be yeah a... and it's like when I when I play along with it it's like my footprints there and you're oh right that's how I play <laughs> And you're relearning your style at the same time. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. The long lost style of Rowan Robertson. You're such a great guitar player though, from what I remember of you when I was younger. It it was right oh, there, you. you know, Wild Ones and those songs. Yeah. Wild One, yeah, thank you. And the yeah. video, you know. Yeah. In the video, yeah. It's it's all fun. cool stuff. What would have been your favorite Dio song or favorites besides oh, wow. y- your songs? You know, what will you have um, concentrated oh, I hard think on playing? Favorite of Dio's career. D- favorite of Dio's career that you would have played live with Dio. Oh wow! Oh, that I played live with him. I think. Um, oh well, it's just it's not something you can choose easily. There's so many great songs. <laughs> he wrote so many. I mean. What would have been the biggest challenge, let's say, for you? Oh, biggest challenge. Um, I think probably Tony Iommi's rhythm because it's so amazing. That guy is, is such an incredible player and such a a rhythmic monster that you know it's uh, it's just an ama- he, he's amazing, Tony Iommi. So I, I think that's probably the biggest challenge is. Is playing in his style to do to do those things, and he was just so rhythmic and he filled so much space, and it was so it was great. Um, I, I you know there's so many great songs that I just uh, I think I I tried to do them justice at the time, but uh, you know and not 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 I don't think there was anything too difficult. I found I just don't know whether I did it well or not. <laughs> Do you, do you recall at all if there's any uh, professional shot concerts with you on guitar? Well, there's one professionally shot concert which I think is actually on YouTube now, which is on German, which is a German TV show, and it's just gone up. I just saw it the other day, and that's um, the beginning of our tour, supporting Metallica in Germany, and that was there was a TV program, a TV show that shot it so it's all professionally done that was the only live footage that was professionally shot which is a which is a shame there wasn't more videos actually yes I'd love to have that mm. unreleased material oh. that we'll ever hear um no all the songs that were recorded were on the album and there was there was a couple of songs that were written in the rehearsal room um that didn't make the album and there are there are some rehearsal 
from rehearsal tapes, but that's not something that I would ever feel comfortable, you know, because, you know, if Ronnie didn't want it out, who am I to put it out? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but anything that was properly recorded, that's all on the album. Well, Rowan, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Well, I really appreciate you uh, including me. Thanks a lot, Jason. Good to talk to you and hope to talk to you again.